scones are very, very simple to make. Get your oven on, get it on nice and hot. I've got it at 200 on fan, so that, again, that's about 220 normal. You want that quite hot, almost bread temperature. So in the bowl, I've got my flour, butter, sugar, baking powder, milk, and a couple of eggs. That's, that's pretty much it. So to start with, pop your unsalted butter straight into the bowl. Then I'm gonna get my hands in there and begin to turn this into breadcrumbs. This is where the kids can get involved. Just clean their hands before. You don't want bits of grub and everything in there. But basically, you're trying to turn it into like a crumble. And why are you doing that? It's basically to help infuse the butter into the flour and it helps with the mixing later. So you're doing most of your work now by introducing the fat into the flour. So again, you're just not, you're looking for all those lumps, break down those lumps. Just gently rub your fingers through it. Lumps are bad, are they? Lumps are bad in a scone because you don't want big lump of butter in there because it'll, co it'll form a big air hole and actually you'll end up with just butter pouring all over your tray, which is what you don't want. You want the butter in the mix, not a big ball of it. You want to infuse it into the flour, which is what I'm doing by rubbing my fingers and the butter together with the flour. So I'm happy with that so far. That's nice and crumbed together. The next thing I'm going to add, sugar, caster sugar, straight in. Then I've got my baking powder straight in. Give that a bit of a mix. Perfect. Two eggs straight in. Crack them on the side. One handed. Clever. All right, the next thing to do, just gently mix the eggs in. And then finally, your milk, whole milk. Hold a little bit back. You just hold it back, because I don't know what your flour's like at home. Your flour might be slightly different to mine. Some flowers take liquid, some flowers don't. So you turn this around, begin to push it together, and you'll see it come together quite nicely into a very soft paste, very soft dough. Now at this stage, you have the ball, and I'm happy just to leave that little bit of milk to one side because the flour hasn't taken it all. So flour on your surface, and then grab your scone mixture, Look how soft that is. How can you tell when it's the right? When it's, when it's like that. If it's solid, you put more liquid in there. If it's pouring out like water, you've got too much liquid in there. So you've got to find that balance where it's, it's still quite a lump, but it's still got a little tackiness to it as well. So what you want to do is just basically fold this together. Is that kneading? It's not kneading, it's folding. Kneading's more stretching. Whereas at this stage, all I'm doing is incorporating all the ingredients together. So it becomes a little bit more compliant, just a little bit neater, if you like. 10 or so movements of that. You don't want to do it too much because it is strong flour. It will bind together and become too gelatinous and therefore won't actually grow too well. It'll grow, but it'll just be a little bit gummy on the mouth when you eat your scone. You want it to be quite short when you eat it. You want it to break apart. You don't want it to be too like chewing gum, you know. Flatten it down. And then roll it out from the middle up, middle down. Turn it exactly the same again. Keep on turning it because you don't want it to stick. The amount of times I'm seeing people roll out straight away onto a, a non-flowered surface and it arcwells itself to the bench. So there's your depth, about an inch. Bring over your tray. Get your scone cutter. Scone cutter. Very, very posh five-star hotel. Me, working class lad. There's a difference between the scones. That be about 20 odd pence in a bakery in the high street. That about one pound fifty in there in a five-star hotel in London. That's the difference between the two. Okay. Turn your cutter in a little bit of flour because it just helps release it and then place them onto your tray. And I'm relaxing the dough, because the well, last thing I don't want to do is roll it out too much on a sticky surface, cut it and it goes whoop. So I'm relaxing it all the time so it keeps its shape. How are you doing that? By keeping it plenty of flour underneath it, it prevents it from shrinking because it, it, it's relaxing at the moment. So if I cut that, it stays that shape. But if I stretch it out and cut it, it'll go whoop, because it's trying to contract again. 
there's your scones, which are beginning to rise already. The baking powder in here will always will be active now. Your oven's nice and hot. Just making sure they can move, they're nice and neat and round. Baking powder basically produces carbon dioxide. The baking powder in there reacts with the milk, the acid, and that creates carbon dioxide and that begins to grow. It, do, it, does, it has a finite life. It's not gonna last for hours. So you've got a, a window of about, probably an, an hour or two to actually use it before it starts losing its power. So again, egg straight in the bowl. Literally just an egg in a bowl. Try not to add any milk because it dilutes that color and you want that beautiful golden brown colour when it comes out of the oven. Adding milk just dilutes that colour a little bit too much. Then you get your pastry brush. Now egg wash the top, try not to egg wash the sides because as this, if it goes down the sides too much it creates a glue and prevents it from rising up. These are rough and ready but honestly they taste amazing from the oven. I love doing scones, I used to do millions of these in the hotel. I mean literally millions in my life I've done. So at that stage, it's ready to go in the oven. Oven's nice and hot. Grab your tray, 15 minutes. Go and have a cup of tea while you're doing it. Pop it in. Use the 15 minutes of a scone in an oven as a good rule. Now I've been making scones for 30 odd years and 15 minutes, bang on, is 99% of the time gonna be spot on. So you can forget about them. Look at the color of these. That's the color you look for, that golden brown, that rich golden brown. Break this apart. Perfect. See, it literally just falls apart in your hand. That's what you're looking for in a good scum. I've got beautiful strawberry jam, clotted cream, and a good scum. So simple. It's so simple. But oh. mm. Mm. Perfect. 